to kick things off, I'd just like to quickly review all of the options that we have for you to purchase. We offer two different plans for you this time around. So you can buy a perpetual license, you can do a full or upgrade. For our loyal customers, we do have, this is good for 30 days, it's $199 to upgrade, and then you get a free brush bundle that has 90 brushes that's worth $179. So that's the option that you've always had. We also now have added subscriptions so that you have a choice. And subscription, we have two different plans. One is monthly at $19.99 or annual at $199. And some of the benefits of subscription are that we're gonna give you access to two free brush packs quarterly. You also get both Windows and Mac with a subscription plan. And then as we come out with updates to the product, you will automatically get those updates without having to do anything else. So those are the, the core options. I did. I have all the pricing for different regions up here as well. And you can of course find all of this information on the website. So what is new in Painter 2021? I'm gonna show you how to run the brush accelerator. And although we introduced this in Painter 2020, it has been greatly enhanced for Painter 2021. And we've heard wonderful things from the beta testers about how great the performance experience has been. So it's definitely something that you should make sure that you do the first time that you launch Painter 2021. And you can, Try it out with our trial if you would like to. Um, there's artificial intelligence, and I think I'm gonna show a little of this, and um, there are tons of different ways to use the AI, and I'll try and explain the variety of options that you have, and it's not just for photo artists. You can also use this with illustrations, brush strokes, you can actually pile AI styles on top of one another, so there's all kinds of fun things that you can do. And then there's clone tinting. And we'll show you how great this is, whether you have a black and white image that you wanna fully colorize, or maybe there's just certain elements within a painting or a photo that you want to tint. Um, it's very quick and easy with these new clone tinting brushes. And then thick paint workflow, all kinds of wonderful stuff for you. We've revamped all of the brushes in the thick paint category. So we've made them look more realistic so that it's, that end result looks better for you without you having to tweak. We also have a new thick paint compatible category with a bunch of new brushes and we'll show these off. There are layer enhance, enhancements. We've got Apple support. You can run Painter on Sidecar and Scott is gonna show all that off for you. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll close out of these slides here and hop over to Painter. When you are greeted by the welcome screen, the first thing you should do is to optimize. This runs the brush accelerator and it's actually analyzing my CPU, my GPU and my memory. And depending upon your system, it will optimize accordingly so that your brushes run as fast as they can, your document manipulation will be set up, and then there's also faster tool switching. So depending upon your system, you can have up to a 20 time gain in your GPU performance, up to four times for drip and liquid, which is our very, very popular sergeant brushes. And now we've also included the texture brushes, they're CPU enhanced, and you can have up to two times speed enhancement there. Now, one thing that I do wanna mention in this brush accelerator, if you have other applications open and running that you don't typically use with Painter, I suggest you close them down because even while I'm running GoToWebinar, it's impacting my score because it's taking some of the power away from Painter. So over on the left, I have a summary. I've got a good brush benchmark. My system exceeds the recommended spe specifications. If you see gray in any one of these bars, it means, for instance, if your GPU was gray, then it's not gonna take advantage of your GPU because your CPU is stronger. But if you wanna learn a little bit about your results, just click down here and we give you some information on how you can upgrade your system or brushes that you could use if you happen to have a score that falls below the expectations. So let's go ahead and close out of this and 
I'm just going to refresh everybody's memory that if you want to search for brushes that are compatible with your system, you can type in GPU in the search window. We have double the number of stamp-based brushes that are supported by GPU. You could type in multi-core or AVX2 in here, and this will bring up all of the compatible brushes. If you want to come to your brush control panels, there's a performance panel that's nested within here. This is also a nice indicator of what your system is going to be taking advantage of. So for instance, let's just grab artist oils. I've got a blender bristle. My CPU is what's going to be powering that brush. So it's a good way to learn about the brushes and your system. If you just wanna keep the performance panel open, you can also run the accelerator from here as well. And you can run the brush accelerator from preferences too. So let's just create a new document because I want to quickly show you some of the information in the new image dialog here. Over on the left, everything that is under size, this is standard. We've had that for a while, but all the way down on the bottom where we've got orientation, this is new. So if I want to select landscape or portrait, I can do that. If I come over to options, I can now choose to start painting on a layer. And if we take a look, we have four different layer types, default, and then our three special media layer types, thick paint, watercolor, and liquid ink. I'm gonna select watercolor, I'll hide the canvas, say okay, and the reason the canvas looks transparent is because it's hidden. So if we look over in the, <clears throat> the layers, you can always turn the canvas back on, and we've got our watercolor layer here. So if I wanna come grab, we have a variety of watercolor brushes, Let's use the, I'm gonna to go to my real watercolor brushes and we'll just throw a few strokes out on the canvas here and we'll show you some things that you can do with these layers in 2021 that's new compared to 2020. So a couple different strokes out here. And if we come to the bottom of the layers panel, I can now add thick paint, watercolor, or liquid ink. So I'm gonna add a watercolor and we'll just you grab another color here and melted flow map sounds good i know skip likes flow maps a lot all right now this is not beautiful this is why i have the artists on the line they'll show you beautiful stuff but i am going to shift select the layers over here and if i right click i can now choose to group my special media layer types together i could collapse so if i collapse it's going to take the two make them one I can also come back to the contextual menu. I can flip horizontal or vertical. So all of these options are new. Um, we could also drop this down to the canvas, collapse everything, and then I could take the watercolor and say, hey, lift it up to thick paint. And when I do so, if I did that right, which I didn't, let's try it again, <laughs> lift to a thick paint layer, it'll take the watercolor, put it up on thick paint, and we can now grab thick paint brushes and start to paint right on top of the watercolor and do some really fun things there. So if I zoom in on this and we take a look, once I've got a thick paint layer, I can begin to adjust the visible depth. So this is where we've given you control. Um, previously, you could only go and adjust the depth by going into the layer properties. Now you can do this on the fly. So it's, it comes in quite handy. So I'm going to close out of this and we'll just close out of some of these panels so that we can save ourselves a little bit of space here. And I'm gonna open up an image to work with. So let's grab this woman right here. And I'm gonna show you some of the AI technology so if i come up to window i'm going to choose a layout and that is photo art and this is where we have placed all of the ai and any other cloning technology that you may want to use so by default if i look up on the property bar we've got a new command bar down at the end here where i could do a quick clone or a clone that creates new documents from this image um, if I wanted to quickly access any of the items within the photo art palette drawer, I can do that as well. And then we've also given special effects that our artists like to use on a regular basis. So just quick and easy access to all of this stuff. 
I'm going to go ahead and we'll come to AI style here and we'll take a look at the presets. So when I look in this drop down menu here, um, <laughs> sorry, I forgot to turn off Teams, so hopefully that goes away. Um, we've got a bunch of presets to work with. And the reason that Painter is unique, if we come to these presets, we did a lot of work to ensure that when you select a preset, so I'm gonna come down to absolute abstract and run this, we have adjusted the strength, the color matching, and the smoothing for the presets. So that um, in most cases, if you just select a preset, it should have a nice end result on your image. But that's not to say that you can't come down here and begin to make adjustments of your own. So color matching is something that's um, unique to Painter. I can bump that up. I could adjust the strength if I wanted this to get even more wild. I could add more of that abstract strength there. And as I'm making these adjustments, this is actually customizing the preset. And you can save your own presets. So once you've made all these adjustments, if I come up here, I could give it a name. And if I had a whole series of photos or a painting or illustrations that were the same kind of style, if I wanted to run the presets on those, it's always accessible from the menu. So let's reset. And let's take a look at some of the other options. So now I'm going to choose charcoal. So some of the presets relate to the media type itself, things like colored pencil, charcoal, and abstract end result. And others, are they are set up more for the kind of photo or imagery that you might be working with. So if I wanted to work with a photo, I could do soft portrait, bold architecture, animals, landscapes. So that's how they're all set up. And I'm going to click to reset here. Now, when I choose to run a style or a preset, I'm choosing soft portrait. If you take a look in the AI style window, that's going to tell you exactly what AI technology is behind the preset that we developed for you. So once this is done running here, it's telling me it use soft pastel. And this is where I can come and make some adjustments. So I've talked about the fact that you can adjust these sliders right here under the AI style, but you also have controls under underpainting. So once I make all these adjustments on the AI style tab, I'm going to come over to underpainting, lower the brightness a little bit, maybe bump up the saturation a tad. And these can also be incorporated into your preset you have the ability to save here as well. So once we've got everything all set up, I'm gonna come down to the bottom and I am going to choose um, what I would like to do. Do I wanna apply all these settings to the current document or a new clone document? I'm gonna choose new. I don't wanna clear the content off the canvas because I actually wanna just dip a paintbrush in there. Um, so we'll do a clone and then it's gonna toggle tracing paper and bring me into the cloner brushes. So when I click apply, we now have our new document here. And if we take a look over, it's sitting on the canvas and we are ready to begin to do our thing here. So I'm gonna come to the brushes and I am going to choose blenders. And if I wanted to get rid of some of the preset, um, that veining that I see in the background there, I can use blenders in order to do that. Some other things that we could do are also to bring in multiple clone sources. So let's say I would have saved my abstract version of the woman. I could have brought her in and actually cloned parts of that preset into this new document. So that's why you know, using these AI styles, you have all kinds of possibilities. Now I just brought in the original image and if there's before, there's after. Okay, so if we come and dip our brush in here, I can begin to work through the background. And if I mess up, I can always soft clone back in the preset style image that we had created. Okay, so maybe come over here and a little bit here. And now that I've got things kind of set up, I'm also going to, the Just Add Water brush is really wonderful for like subtly blending out some of the elements that the style may have given you, or in this case, she actually had 
hair on her forehead. So it's just doing a representation of that. Just add water, I can quickly and easily blend away some of that content that I might not want in my final image. Now I'm down here in the left-hand corner in the shadow area. All right, so let's take the canvas. I'm gonna right click and pop this up to a thick paint layer. And I'm not gonna worry about the thickness right now because we'll make adjustments as we're moving along here. So if I go to clone tinting, I want to point out at the bottom of the panel here, there's a new compatibility icon. And it's telling you as you select brushes, what kind of layer the brush is compatible with. So if I select my, I've got a splatter tint and we take a look in the clone color here, you see that the color wheel is grayed out, but it's showing me that there's a blue color. So this clone tinting, I have my Wacom Intuos Pro tablet. I can use pressure with my stylus and that's how it's going to apply to the image here. And if I come to the top left, I'm just gonna tap and it's saying, oh, okay, so this brush that you're working with is not compatible with a thick paint layer. So do you wanna create a new layer that's compatible? I'm gonna do that. We can always check this box down here. These are just informational boxes so that you can learn about the special media types. And once you've learned everything you need to know, you don't have to have them pop up again. All right, so let's just come back up to the top left here and I'm pressing very light. It's giving me that blue. As I press down harder, it's mixing the color from the original image with the color that I have selected in the color wheel. So we can very quickly and easily kind of touch this up here. If I grab a soft tint cloner and I'm just going to use my little eyedropper to sample from within and I'll get a nice big brush, um, I can begin to brush some nice vibrant color into her hair here. So depending upon the pressure that I place, you know, lightly right now, I'm getting more of the color that I had selected in the color wheel. As I begin to press down harder, it's going to give me more of the clone source color. Okay, so real quick, boop, boop, boop. Get some of that over there, maybe a little bit red here and decrease the, make it a little bit darker and we'll come over here probably could have fixed ah good i just tinted away that little glitch that i had created okay so now if we take a look um there's before and there's after just with our presets some blending a little bit of clone tinting i've got the clone tinting on its own layer there so i have control over that um now i'm going to go ahead and we'll come back to the thick paint layer and let's grab some thick paint brushes. So we'll come over here and I want one that's going to look kind of hairy. So maybe this loaded thick and wet would be a good choice and we'll grab the brush. Now keep in mind, this is painting underneath the clone tinting layer, okay? So it's very, very subtle. It's even being, you know, kind of blocked out by some of the clone tinting that I had placed there. Um, if we take a look, I'll go ahead and zoom in here. Depending upon how you work with these brushes, I'm gonna add another new thick paint layer and we'll zoom out. And I'm gonna paint on this own layer with this brush. And you see how different this brush is when it's mixing with the existing paint and content um, that we created with the preset. It has an extremely different look than what we're getting right now when I'm painting with this brush on its own layer. Now, if we zoom in and take a look at this, and now my phone is ringing. Um, I'm gonna zoom in even more so that you can see very closely here. I can begin to adjust this visible depth. And as I move it over to the right, it's increasing the ridges on these brush strokes. There's another cool thing that we can do with this. If I go ahead and zoom out here, I'm going to, we'll stay on this thick paint layer and I'm gonna to go to my thick paint compatible brushes. So these brushes are brand new. Previously, you couldn't work with thick paint um, with any other media type. Now we can mix and match chalks and pastels and all different kinds of things. So let's come over here on the right and I'm just gonna to begin to 
paint here. So it's saying this is compatible with thick paint layer. You want to keep doing that? Yeah, sure. I'm going to go ahead and maybe select a little bit darker color. So this gives a very hairy type of appearance here. And I can quickly, you know, add in some really nice strokes there using the oil pastels. And to finish things off, because I got to turn it over to the artist, let's take a look at the toggle the tracing paper on and off here. With the thick paint layer that we've got going on, I can preserve transparency and then you can start to really have some fun. So if I go back to my thick paint in my loaded bristle and I size this up, now it's allowing me to only paint on the strokes that I have placed on that layer. So this is gonna be a little bit in your face obnoxious here <laughs> so that you can get the idea of what I'm doing, but preserving the transparency of the thick paint layer is brand new in Painter 2021 as well. So with that, I am going to pass the screen over to Scott, who has been so patiently waiting. It's actually the middle of the night for him right now. So <laughs> let me come over here and we'll change to Scott. You should have control now, Scott. Perfect. Thank you, Tanya. Your screen. So you can see my screen? Yep, looks good right now. I awesome. see just your painting. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to show a sidecar with Painter. So this is actually on my iPad. It see there. Appears, yeah, it appears to be, yeah. Yeah, okay. And we've got a touch bar that we can do controls. Um, like bottom here, and I tap, that'll bring up my color wheel. Just got a little bit of lag because of the um, webinar. So use my color wheel there. On the, on the left hand side, you've got all your uh, shortcuts, like command, option, um, and control. So I can actually use a color pickle there as well. So on the side there, I can move and get colors on this tracker guy. And for brushes, we can also size the brush down below. If I, I can actually use my finger and use the slider. So if I make a brush stroke, Let's just get on the right layer. So what have you thought about the sidecar experience, Scott? Uh, it's, it's, you can tell it's like in its early stages, but it's definitely, um, it's really neat to have Painter and using the Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro and the touch bar definitely is going to help with being able to resize um, also opacity for your brush as well you can just use like I'm using my left hand I'm right-handed so I can slide that as I'm working and then you know and I can undo rather than relying on the keyboard the whole time because normally even on the Cintiq I don't use my keyboard that much I'd rather use our shortcut buttons or in the menu. I have my um, shortcuts in the painter, like make right. custom, like here I'll have my custom palettes and stuff. So, and how about the Apple, put, sorry. <laughs> sorry. How about the Apple Pencil? How do you find working yeah, with Apple? Oh, it's good. I was actually surprised. You just got to go in and, um, recalibrate so if you've already got a if you don't already have a tablet connected and you're only using your ipad like some people might not have a tablet and just and already have an ipad you can go in and um set up your brush in um preferences brush tracking and because i do have a, a whack on 
that curve will be different for my um, pressure. So you just got to go in there for the Apple Pencil because they do calibrate slightly different. And if you do that, then you're good to go. You'll still get that same kind of pressure curve that you're used to. So the Apple Pencil works really well. It's just got to, you've got to be aware if you do have some other tablet device that you've set up that you have to change it. Thanks for highlighting that. Very good point. Yeah, because when I first started using us, what's going on, the input was a lot different. So yeah, if you do that, then it's all good. And um, we've also got some more, we can flip our image as well with the shortcuts. And uh, this one is if you're using in pasta and you want to turn it on and off, there's a shortcut down there. And we can also zoom in, reframe. Um, I'm just using touch to rotate as well on the iPad. Uh, you can also use a, a trackpad if you have a Mac a uh, trackpad and do that as well to so zoom in and out. And another cool feature is uh, swapping brushes. So if I'm using one brush and um, I want to constantly go between two different brushes, you can just use a shortcut down the bottom here that are that are flipped between them. Can you see that? So you can just go back and forth. So I'm going between chunky oil pastel and uh, real 2B pencil. And we also have a bunch of videos that you created for us that we'll be sharing as well. Because it was yeah. a little bit of a challenge to try and get this to display in the GoTo webinar. Yes, yes. Um, we thought we could do it direct from the iPad, but I was having issues. I think it's because of the sidecar. Maybe it's on the Apple side where it's not allowing it. So. I've got extra lag because I'm running through QuickTime on my iMac and also running Go Webinar. So I've got, and running Painter. So I've got three things running at the moment. But normally I wouldn't have that much lag. It's actually quite, quite good response to your brush strokes. Like you can just get carried away and um, fully painting. Well, that's great. I'm excited to see what other people think of the sidecar support. I haven't had the opportunity yeah. to play because I don't have an iPad. Well, I think it's awesome. A lot of people might have an iPad and haven't got a tablet yet, or my tablet breaks down, I can still, you know, work in Painter. All right. Fantastic. All right. Thanks so much, Scott. You're welcome, Tanya. How are you managing to stay awake right now? I don't know, but um, <laughs> <laughs> do just, I stay out awake? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I've got um, Miguel is asking, "What is your last name?" And this is Scott Payne. So we'll yes. we'll be sure to refer you guys to all of the tutorials. Okay, so up next was Karen. She volunteered. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Karen Boniker. Let's see here. Hopefully that's perfect. Oh, pretty. Nice. Everybody see my screen? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tanya and, and Scott. What I'd like to show you today is um, a couple of workflows that you might want to consider with some of the new um, wonderful tinting options that we have in Painter. And this one was a uh, 
black and white, a monochromatic um, thick paint th that I did that I decided to experiment with and use some clone tinting uh, with. And what I'm going to show you here is a, an example of how to get started. So what I have here is I'm going to grab my, I'm using the Wacom 3D art pen. And um, this is my favorite. I'm using just the Intuos Pro. And let me get set up here. I have, a, I have my monochromatic on a thick paint layer. I've done a little bit of scumbling on a new layer just to add the effect of kind of some sparkle on the water. And the brush that I used for that is the grainy tint scumble. And I used it at a very small tip size so that it would create that effect of sparkle and reflection off of the water. So I use very few brushes to get started here. I like to add layers because they give you the flexibility of working non-destructively. So if something goes wrong, I can always start again. And uh, that's a wonderful process to work in because it gives you a little bit um, uh, it makes you feel a little more relaxed when you start painting because you know if something doesn't work out, you can start again. So I'm working um, with a color palette here, uh, added a new layer, and my process, I'm going to reset this brush, uh, make sure it's all set to default. There's a couple of ways, I know Tanya has explained a couple of ways to get started with the um, clone panel. But a lot of times I like to just jump right in with a brush and there's there's a really nice opportunity to do that here in Painter where when I select this brush, the soft tint cloner, you'll notice that it already has set the, uh, the color wheel to clone. And then I have the option here of setting this uh, by selecting this drop down, I can set it to current pattern, texture, or embedded in an image, and that's what I'm going to do in this case. The uh, dialog that comes up will give me that opportunity to select the painting that I want to work on, and in this case, it's going to be the painting called Gray Day. And I select that, and now that is my clone source, and you can see that it's set up here, uh, and I'm ready to, to get started. So what I'm going to do is colorize this image, and I'm going to be using clone tinting to do that. And it's going to be based upon the source image. So with the option of clone tinting set, I have this uh, ability to set the amount of tinting that I want. And I'm going to go a little overboard here because I want to be able to show you <clears throat> the vibrant color that you can get here. So. With that, if I want to uh, change the color and work with something a little different, I can go just tap on my color wheel and you can see that I can move around. Um, I also have the opportunity to uh, pick a color from my mixer pad and I'm using a Dorn mixer pad uh, color set here. And I have my harmonies open, which I do all the time now because I find this one of the most uh, wonderful ways to work with color and especially these last two, monochromatic light and monochromatic dark, that give me that full range of values that I can work with. So I'm going to pick uh, something right in this area here, and I'm just going to start uh, painting in. I've got 10 minutes to do this for you. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, just pull in some color here. And there's a couple of brushes that I basically um, uh, go from one to the other, the soft tint cloner and the soft tint. Now, the interesting thing about soft tint is that you'll see when I apply it here, it, it really goes on pretty heavily. But when I go back to my soft tint cloner, you can see that I can lighten those areas up a little bit and just subdue that a bit. And a lot of this is just based upon how much pressure you apply to that brush. So the lighter pressure or the firmer pressure, you're going to get more color coming through and lighter pressure, you'll get 
some of that traditional uh, or resource image coming through in the, the traditional colors. I want a little bit of a, a blue up at the top here. So my idea here as I'm tinting this is to uh, give the idea of a uh, fog bank that's situated off the coast here and a little bit of that blue sky uh, coming through up at the top. And maybe I'll bring my brush size down a little bit here and just pull in a little blue right across here. And let's um, let's take a look at warming it up a little bit with a few warmer colors here. And then I'm going to pull that nice warm, those nice warm values down into the beach as well. You can see as I go back over some of those areas, you know, this is where you have a, some nice control over how much tint you want to apply in certain areas. Let's get some tint into the water here. And very quickly, you get you get something that you can tint based upon the values that you want to work with. And you can go and start going into it with additional, oops, additional colors as well. And I wouldn't stop here. <laughs> I would start taking a look at some of my other brushes here. Now, I love the fact that I can now uh, work on a thick paint layer. Um, with some of my favorite brushes and uh, some of those are my pastel gold brushes which i just love uh, this one pastel blender is one of my favorite brushes i can uh, change this to a tinting brush as well by using use clone color making sure that i have clone tinting set on that brush by selecting the little drop down here selecting clone tinting and then from that point, I can use my Alt key and sample colors and begin doing a little bit of fine work in terms of painting into this. So this is the part that I just um, I just love. Um, now, if I don't want to work with clone tinting anymore, I'll just take that off, and I can select my own colors here, and I can start doing some little elements of soft waves. I can deepen and darken some of these values closer to the wave break. And there you have a little bit of clone tinting. And last but not least, I'll add some birds, maybe about here and there you go so that would be how i would approach clone tinting in a uh, landscape painting and really quickly i will show you get rid of that one 
how you would apply this on a already colored uh, landscape as well. So again, I would add my layer and my brush that I really like using here is a soft tint cloner. It just works. It's so soft and not overpowering and you can really get some nice control over it. Uh, again, we're going to use the clone source. We'll select the embedded image. And for this, this is a sunset season. And we'll select OK. And my idea here was just to strengthen the sunset area a little bit. So I'm going to uh, make the brush a little larger. Uh, pick a nice kind of golden color here and just tint that area just a little bit further. And I can apply a little bit of that reflective light to some of the other elements of the painting as well. So lots of nice control here. And uh, of course I can, you know, use different colors and sample colors. Um, if I wanted to pull a little bit of that, a little bit more of that yellow under this violet cloud here. I have that opportunity. Okay, so that is how I, a couple of different workflows that you can use uh, using soft uh, or tone uh, clone tinting. And uh, I think you'll find it real powerful. Um, I find it a little bit easier to, to use than even glazing brushes because of the, the fact that it actually is applying that clone source and you're able to, to really establish and pick up those areas and uh, make them either darker or lighter. Okay. Karen, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I'm confused because it appears that somehow some people are getting Spanish, <laughs> not just the interface, but the audio is in Spanish. Um, so if you can hear me and if you hear English right now, I, I'm not sure what's happening, but the session is being recorded and I'm hearing English. So hopefully the recording will be in English as well. <laughs> um, We've tried, we've tried to look at all the settings to see if there was anything set in Spanish, but there's not. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Skip. Karen, thanks again. And both Karen and Skip um, teach at Digital Art Academy. And I know that they have already announced a Painter 2021 course. So I just wanted to be sure to mention that. And Skip, you know, feel free to give some information about that as well. I uh, will. Can you see my screen? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. So what I'm going to do today is just sort of play a little bit, and I like to I like to wet, work wet, and usually that's with watercolor. But today I'm going to use uh, real wet oils and uh, just kind of work in a very wet manner. So I've got, and we're not working. Why not? There we go. Okay, so I've got my brush, which is, I call it a oil wash, and um, it's just applying the color. It The brush has a color expression. So a light pressure is giving me this light kind of yellow color. And as I go to heavier pressure, I get a darker color that's showing. Now you may notice that the paint seems to be moving. And that's because it is. I've got it set to, um, to, you can set your brushes to delay diffusion, but I take that off because then I get sort of the actual feeling of the running paint and how the wash kind of plays uh, as it goes over the page. And so that's kind of what I'm doing. So heavy pressure gives me the darker color and light pressure gives me the lighter color. Okay, so now I've got my my wash established. 
I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller and I'm going to pick um, I'm going to pick this blue color here and uh, take it really down dark like that. And then I'm going to uh, go to the next color. I'm going to take that same blue again. And this time, well, it won't let me do it. Let me see here. Okay, that should get me where I need to go. There we go. And I want this to be a little bit light. Okay, now I've got it set that the dark color is the um, main color and the light blue is the light color. So uh, is the additional color. So a light pressure will give me the light blue which is what I want to do to start with. And then I can just do a little heavy pressure and I begin to get uh, some other, some dark color and then add a little light color in there. And of course it may run and we may leave the run, we may not. Now we're going to go back to the temper wheel. I'm going to pick this green. And we'll take that kind of light green color. I'm going to switch that. And I'm going to take this blue. And I want to bring it down kind of dark. Okay, now, so uh, heavy pressure will give me the lighter color and light pressure will give me the darker color. And so I'm just going to come in here and just play, just make some marks. Ah. Now, I want brighter marks over here on this side, which is where my uh, a light is coming from. And we'll do darker marks on this side. And, you know, this is just, this is, this is what I would call an oil sketch. And so I'm just kind of laying stuff in there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this orange. And so that's going to be the main color. And again, the additional color is the black, uh, the dark blue. So now I can come up here and just kind of squirrely something in there. And we'll do a couple of those here and there. And maybe we want one a little bigger. Like that. And then we'll just take a few marks here and there to kind of indicate that there's going to be some flowers in other places. It's, if you hadn't figured it out yet, these, these are supposedly flowers. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to go to my color, uh, my mixer pad, and I'm going to go to a uh, thick paint brush. Now, we've been on layer one, so when I use this brush, it's going to create a thick paint layer. And I can use, um, pick up, uh, sample multiple color. So the brush will give me, you know, multiple color. Now, I kind of, I went to a very light color because I'm over here on the light side. But I can pick another color with that in just a second. And I love working with these palette knives and thick paint. They almost paint, you know, the image 
themselves they just create these really fun roses at least they're fun to me i hope they're fun to you guys okay so i'm going to take this now and go a little darker and bring that around and see i can even darken some of the edges over here on that side And of course, if I wasn't trying to work so fast, I would probably do this a little more carefully, but you get the idea. Now I'm gonna come in with a lighter color and we'll just give some impression of some leaves going over here. We'll take it a little darker. Isn't this neat? I mean, <laughs> I think this is so much fun. And you know, y'all can talk to me if you like. <laughs> Skip, I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to answer questions and it's right. It's taking up the whole screen right now because there's a lot of questions coming in, but this okay. looks so great. Thank you. I really need to play around with this and try to replicate your technique here. Uh, it's it's a fun way to work. Okay, so I, I, I've got my thick paint sort of on there. Now I'm gonna come in with a, a compatible brush. This is a linear brush. And I want to go to that um, bluer color. So I just switched um, the main and additional color. And so now I can get, you know, just some. Now, this this is a impasto brush. So it is laying down some impasto, which is kind of neat. Um, and it, it actually can act it can actually cut into the thick paint area and i'm just trying to put a little bit of color here that's going to give me some darkness when i i need a little bit of uh light now i'm going to show you a trick notice that i have pick up underlying color selected i'm going to go up to the thick paint it's not showing but the compatible brushes will pick up underlying color thick paint won't but if i pick up like um a, a brush that is a compatible brush like this one is um it's going to pick up the underlying color along with the color that uh, i've got on the brush which is that blue color so it's going to uh, put the two to, you know, pick up the yellow from down here and put it in there. I want to go back to my color set. I want to come to this dark color here, and I'm actually going to make it a little bit darker. And that's going to be my main shadowy brush. Ooh, I'm running out of time. All right, so I'm just kind of getting a little bit of a shadowy look to it. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do one last step. I'm going to take my shift key and select both layers. Now, if I right click, we have the ability to collapse layers and I'm collapsing a thick layer with a regular layer. And it does tell you that it you lose some things, but you don't really. I mean, you still have the thick paint. This is now a default layer. And so because it's a default layer, I can come up here and go to surface control, apply lighting, and I can grab this little light and bring it up here whirl it around and that 
is about what I want. It's not going to add a lot of light, but it's going to add enough that it brightens that little corner and gives you a little bit more light. And there you, you have a very fast <laughs> thick paint uh, uh, wash, uh, runny wash painting. And that's it. And it's oh, amazing. Um, there, are, there are questions asking about your brushes. Are these native to painter or are they able to get them from you somewhere? Yeah, I, I, you can get these brushes will be available in my class. Now, if you don't mind waiting, probably in about six months or so, it'll be on my blog. I mean, all the brushes that I make become free at some point. Uh, so uh, you can get them there. But I tell you, there is a brush. Let's uh, let me see if I can find it. If we go to um, 2021. Uh, come on, Painter. And we go to Real Wet Oils. Now, which one is it? Liquid oil, so friend. One of these brushes runs, and I'm sorry I don't remember which one right now. I can figure it out and let everybody know in the follow-up as well. Okay. It what it does is it's set to run up the page uh, toward the top instead of down, and you can just change the direction of the wind. Uh, but I, I'm sorry, I don't remember which one it is. Let's just see what happens if I grab one. That's not going to be it. Um, anyway, you'll, you'll be able to find it. Uh, yeah. Tanya, I'll so figure I'll, it I'll out. And, yeah. 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 Um, Craig is wondering how you're able to get the brush rotation while painting. I'm using an Wacom art pen. And if you don't have one, I highly recommend it because it does give you the option of barrel flow, uh, barrel rotation. So if you have a brush like this palette knife, I'm just re rotating the barrel in my fingers. And that allows me then to, you know, to do all kinds of things. Now, this particular brush is set to have... Um, it's set with angle jitter. So as I move it around, it's going to kind of uh, twirl on its own a little bit. And that's what gives me those that ability to make those flowers real quick. Uh, now you can, you actually can do these very carefully. Uh, you know, they don't have to be as quick as what I was doing. You, you can get used to how it works and really do some interesting stuff with these these kinds of brushes everybody um, wants to know about your course okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> the course is called uh painter 2021 lots loads of new stuff and you can find it at uh, the Digital Art Academy, I don't have a link in front of me uh, for that. If you if you can remember Skip Allen Paints, if you just type that into Google, that'll take you to my blog. And the last entry in my blog has links to where you can go and join the class um, or go to uh, the Digital Art Academy, we have a lot of classes going. Karen has some of the most wonderful classes you've ever seen where she shows you how to do this beautiful stuff that you just saw her do. Um, and she has some, you, you'll see, you need to go and look at the classes. One of the ones I think uh, that I like or think it is very popular are the, the six months classes that uh, it's like Painter 2021 Part 1. And then you have like six months of videos that um, she shows how you do different things like, like those landscape paintings that she was showing. 
her her stuff is so beautiful. I'm kind of rough. <laughs> That is not true, but I'm glad that you bring up all the courses because there's interest. You know, some people are beginners and they've asked, is there a recommendation that we have for, you know, how to get started? How do I even know what brushes to choose and set up my canvas and all that kind of stuff? Um, so I don't know if you have a course that you recommend for somebody like that as well. Well, we do have a beginner course, but it's using Painter 2019. And mm -hmm. if you have 2019, it's a great course to take. Now, if you want to use 2021 with that course, you can do it. It's just that the user interface is so much more powerful with 2021 that it will be a little bit odd looking at the me working in 2019 and trying to transfer it to 2021. What I usually do though, is if there's a new person there and they have 2021 or 2020, uh, and they get into any kind of situation where they're not quite understanding the way the interface is working, I, I'll come in and do a quick video that uh, kind of gives them what they need. We do, we do a lot of bonus videos. Um, where if there's a question asked, then we go in and add an, uh, another video. That 2019 course, there's approximately 200 videos in that. Um, so, I mean, it's you, you get a lot of stuff. <laughs> the 2020 course is uh, a little over 100 videos. And I'm sure I haven't finished 2021. We've got the first session done, but uh, I'm sure we'll be up in the 100 uh, plus range for videos. And most of them are fairly short, um, meaning that hopefully they're not longer than 15 or 20 minutes and preferably more in the five to eight minute range. But it just depends. Any other questions? Well, there's a couple questions about, and I don't know if you do this, but do you have a recommendation for how to print artwork like this? That's a tough one because with the thick yeah. paint. <laughs> yeah, it is tough. Um, it's still it's going to look like thick paint. It's just not going to feel like it. Um, that's what I think is kind of interesting. I am not a person to ask about printing. Um, I'm one of these weird people who think we shouldn't print that we should provide JPEGs or whatever and have people show the work in uh, monitors of some sort, you know, those big things that you can put on your wall and run through the artwork or something, because that's the way we produce it. That's the way it looks, to me, looks the best. You can print and make it look similar to this, but it, it's, for me, I just, you know, I just think it's a, it's a new art form and let's do it that way. But then, you know, I'm this old crazy person, so <laughs> I don't listen to me. Well, it, I mean, it does make sense because the technology is not broadly available where you can print and actually have raised strokes. It's, we're not there yet, so. Right. There are people who are making three-dimensional printing uh, for painting like this. It's just, it's like you said, it's not available uh, very well. It's not, it's not perfected. Yeah. Okay, I'm just doing a quick scan here. Um, what I will be sure to do is to include a link to Digital Art Academy in the follow-up for the webinar as well. And I think, oh, there was one question. What kind of tablet are you using, Skip? Uh, I'm using uh, Cintiq. It's the older Cintiq, the 24-inch uh, HD Touch. Um, so I don't have a new one. I do have, an, I, I, depending on what computer I'm on, I, I go to Jackson frequently and I have a setup there. And in, in, uh, when I go back to Jackson, I'm using an Intuos 5, not even a Pro, it's that old Intuos 5. And I love it, it's a workhorse and um, it's great. But I do like my Cintiq as well, so. 
Yes, as you should. Yeah. <laughs> That's a special tool. Yeah, it really is. It took me a long time to be able to get one. I had to save up, but finally I took the splurge. And when I bought it, it was at the tail end of its life's expectancy. In other words, they were they were just about to move on to the 27 inch and all that. So I'm kind of behind the times with that. But maybe one day I'll be able to get upgrade to the 27 inch as well. Let's hope so. <laughs> okay, there's. I think we've covered most of the questions here. Um, I, I will take a look over these after the session and just make sure to follow up with anybody that I we didn't have the opportunity to answer in the session. But I want to give a huge thanks. I see Scott is still here with us. It's what, four in the morning there? Thank you, Scott, who was our first presenter, and Karen Boniker for that amazing painting that you created, and Skip Allen. And I don't I don't even know how you crank these paintings out <laughs> <laughs> so quickly. It's really, really cool. And I encourage everybody to check out the Digital Art Academy courses. They're wonderful, people love them. Um, it's a very collaborative community as well. So be sure to check that out and we'll link you over to everything. Thank you for joining us for our launch webinar and just keep your eyes out. We'll keep coming out with new tutorials for you, but there's a ton of them already on YouTube. So be sure to take a look. And I Thank wish you, you all, yes, thanks. Everybody have a wonderful day. We did record this, so I will put this up on YouTube when it's done processing today. Bye, Karen. Bye, Scott. You guys are muted, so I can't hear you. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Tanya. Thanks for having All me. Right. Sure. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye, Karen. Bye, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you a bunch. This has been really fun to do. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.